Hello there, person. Let's check out what's new making the game Wraithbinder. This week, I've been working on the boomerang, the bow, and targeting and aiming. So now we have the bow weapon. Really excited about this. I haven't done any sound effects for it yet, but it has a short shot, or sort of a quick, um, yeah, a quick short shot, you, should, you, could, you could call it. And then it's got a longer shot. If I hold down the button, he aims upward, and it's got this really nice big arc, and it goes a long distance. Um, you can see that there's a particle effect going on when, uh, as the arrow flies through the air, it leaves like a, a trail. It's actually some particles. Um, also, when the arrow hits the ground, it sticks into the ground. It just sticks there. Actually, each arrow has its own AI. And, um, like, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Um, but then we've got the boomerang as well, so you can hold down, uh, you can hold down the button to aim the boomerang. Um, and you can now do this with all ranged weapons. You can hold down the button. So if I find an enemy, I can hold, like, this, uh, enemy's healing stone right here. I can hold down the button, and if I, if I turn away from it, it'll aim at something else, but if I just, if I aim near it, anywhere near it, it'll lock on the target. And when I let go of the boomerang, it'll immediately shoot towards it. Same thing with the bow. So if I lock onto this target, it'll shoot uh, a nice arrow. That arrow doesn't look right, but it is flying correctly. Um, and it'll, it'll fly right at that target, and if I aim downward a little bit, it'll switch over to that target there, this, uh, the turret. We can aim at it. A few little visual glitches and things like that, but most of the mechanics are all really working well. I like the, how it's got this. So if we've got, once again, we've got this um, long shot, short shot, and targeted shot, and that applies for the the bow. But the aimed, the targeting, the lock on the target works for any of the ranged weapons now, even the grenade. So check it out. If I'm like, if I find a target with a grenade, I can throw that grenade directly towards it. That was just a random grenade throw there. There's a target. Oh, sorry. There's a targeted grenade. So, this is really good progress we have made for um, just tightening up the controls for the ranged weapons. I found that when I was playing versus the bots and just running around, things like that, it was really hard to use telekinesis. In fact, that's this is one of the favorite my favorite parts is that you can grab onto things now with telekinesis and uh, um, and lock onto that target. So check this out. When you get telekinesis going with this targeted aiming, uh, I need some more matter here. See how I can walk backwards while using telekinesis? It's because I'm locked on. So that makes it really a lot more convenient to use telekinesis. You can lock onto your target. And uh, and then applying that to the ranged weapons really helped the gameplay a lot. Tighten things up quite a bit. Things feel a lot better than they used to with the, with the ranged weapons. I'm almost dead. Oh, I was the last person on that team. All right. Well, so there you have it. That's all really that's new um, with the with the aiming and all that. It took a long time to dial all these new features in, but really, really happy with um, the results. Uh, the controls just feel much, much better. So let's take a little look at a little bit of the code there. Um, there's a lot to how movement applies to the bow, the arrow, and everything, but let's just take a look at... Uh, this bow shot entity. So this is the AI for the bow shot, which is just an arrow. Um, it could be called arrow, but all of the ranged projectiles have the word shot in their title, so I just kept it as a bow shot for now. Um, it's actually just shooting out a ghost sword. Um, but then there's um, there's actually two different versions of the bow. So this is the 3D model for the bow, and then this is the 3D model for the bow aiming upwards. So we can have those two different animations for when he's shooting. And the same thing with the, uh, the all the blender animations have to be done twice. Once for the, this is a short shot. And then we've got the, this is aiming for the short shot. And then we've also got the aiming for the long shot. It's just uh, his 
torso is ro his chest is rotated just a little bit more in this shot so he he's aiming upwards at more of a diagonal and then the same with the two uh, shoots so there's bow shoot low and bow shoot high but this is the bow shooting animation I'm kind of uh, I'm happy with it so far but I feel like there's something else I could probably do to make it just a little bit better um, seeing how seeing how his back arm moves through this animation really helps to give a little bit of motion when you're in the game you see like sometimes the the players uh, arm blends into itself a little bit too much so I'm working on the 3d highlights to kind of clarify that and then the the, uh, the code will kind of clean that up a little bit I think but having his arm see how his arm kind of goes right there it's up and then boom from there he twists backwards and then comes down it kind of gives a little bit of motion and draws your eye a little bit so you can tell that that's one of his arms so it becomes a lot of time if actually you kind of tell when you make it oh yeah there you go this is a good example right zoom all the way out and you can be like oh gosh and now i see what you mean his arm is so tiny that you really needed some motion to draw your eye and tell that something is actually happening there so there's that and then the ai this is how it works um for the arrow it has um it says it's vector from uh, when it's spawned and then uh see here when it basically hit, if its position is less than one if it this will this means that it hits the um the out of bounds area below the whole level if the if the arrow flies all the way down there it just removes itself immediately but if it hits the ground um and that it just checks if it has the move grounded flag then it sets its vector to none, removes its collision component, and then removes itself after two seconds. I need to put some kind of like fade out right here so that uh, it fades out the entity nicely, but for now they just disappear after a second. Um, and then the render system handles um, rotating it. And this code is a little bit messed up depending on your camera angle. Um, I still doesn't, I, can't, I haven't quite perfectly got the, the math right for this. I'm sure I should be using 3D vectors, but for right now I've got this janky two-dimensional math going on. That's probably the reason why the arrows aren't perfectly rotated all the time. But that's just a simple bug fix away from making the visuals for how the arrows fly look just a little bit better. So there you have it. Working on the, uh, the bow, the boomerang, and um, some more abilities that are left to do are adding in elemental effects that'll be and also the gun so there'll be there's the bow the boomerang the grenades and a gun um so the gun will be next and then there's also some magical abilities like fire ice lightning and poison uh which i'm thinking you'll probably be able to add to your weapons rather than use independently like a instead of a, instead of it being like a magical fireball it would be like uh, you adding fire to your boomerang just like you did in Songbringer uh, Which is really fun. You get to choose a path like okay I got this boomerang, but now I've got fire or am I gonna add fire to my boomerang or am I gonna add it to my bow something like that? So it sounds kind of fun to me to customize your weapons that way. So uh, That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time